This has been a bad wildfire season across Oregon, and those fires have had a big impact on the state's farming community. Joining us on the PNW Ag Network hotline is Matt McElligot, president of the Oregon Cattlemen's Association. Matt, as you talk with producers and ranchers across the state, what have you heard when it comes to the devastation these fires have created? Yeah, Glenn, this is one of the very worst I've ever seen. I think the worst that Oregon has ever seen. So many acres lost, and this early. We're just into mid-August right now. We've got a month to a month and a half of fire season ahead of us. Uh, What I've been hearing in the field as people are starting to kind of recoup a little bit as the smoke clears and some of these fires are getting under control is they're trying to find their livestock and assess the damages that has happened to their outbuildings, their infrastructure like fences, their water systems, um, and locate their livestock. I would imagine, Matt, that this is just a heartbreaking venture. I, I understand that there's a lot of, you know, challenges from mother nature, livestock dying as a producer, but having to just sit back and probably feel very helpless as a wildfire rolls through not only those buildings, but a lot of grazing land across Oregon has probably got to be very demoralizing for the industry. Yeah. Millions of, uh, you know, over 1.2 millions of acres have already been lost to wildfires. And uh, you're, you're absolutely right. There's not much you can do. I mean, you do your best to protect what you can. Uh, and then you just have to let Mother Nature take its course. Uh, and uh, some of us are, are lucky. Rains hit at just the right time to slow the fires down and help the firefighters get a handle on it. And some of us aren't. Um, and it's, it is. It's pretty tough. Pretty tough on on families that have been generational ranches uh, to watch uh, your livelihood and your hard work just disappear in a matter of minutes. Matt, along those lines, have you heard of any or heard from anybody, I guess I should say, who've said, you know what, Matt, this this fire was just unfortunately the nail in the coffin and and we're just not going to be able to rebound from this? You know, I have not, and I don't expect a whole lot of that. Um, Ranchers and and those in the agricultural community are very resilient. Um, And this isn't the first disaster anybody has ever faced, whether it be fire, flood, um, cold weather, you know, high winds. That's the name of the game, unfortunately. Uh, But this one is a bad one. I you know, I haven't heard of anybody that says, you know, I'm done, I'm, I'm moving on. Um, what I've heard is that they're they're picking up the pieces and they're moving forward. Matt, livestock producers are, I, I don't want to say a proud group, but they are definitely a group of people who wake up early, work late, and very rarely ask for assistance even when they need it. But I would assume there's a lot of producers out there who are looking for hay, for forage, for something. Do you know, is there any sort of effort to try to help those producers out there that have maybe not necessarily lost a building, but lost what they were planning to feed their cattle for the next couple of weeks or couple of months? Yep, yep. So when you lose, right now we're in the in the heart of the grazing season and you lose all of that forage, it was standing forage that cattle were to convert into pounds of beef. Um, then they have to be brought somewhere else and put onto grass somewhere else or fed fed hay to get them through. Now, um, OSU Extension is coordinating a uh, hay exchange for people that want to donate hay for those affected by fires. And those that are donated, um, they just need to contact Oregon State Extension Service within their county and then Oregon State Extension Service will connect them with people that need hay. Uh, we can help facilitate that through OS, uh, um, OCA, but OSU is, is really taking the lead on that. They aren't physically taking the hay, but they are connecting people that would like to donate it, that people that need hay donated to get them through this, this time period. You know, Matt, that, that's great when we can see different parts of the farming community rally around each other and to help each other. Is there a way the non-farming community can help? If somebody lives in town and, and they don't have a hay field, is there a way that they can help producers? 
Oh, you bet. Yep. Um, Oregon Cattlemen's Association has set up a wildfire funding um, uh, account to where if they want to donate ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, or or two thousand um, dollars, that money goes into a reserve account designated just for wildfire recovery for the people that need help. Um, and we are collecting funds uh, right now as we speak, um, putting it into that account. And then as people assess what they need, how they've been hurt, the livestock they've lost, the miles and miles of fences that are going to need rebuilt um, or a corral system or outbuildings, then uh, we'll have an application um, process to apply for help funding there. Matt, you alluded to this a little while ago. Can you, again, maybe talk to our non-farm listeners out there about what a unique situation it is to have a natural disaster roll through because it doesn't only impact you uh, from a professional standpoint as a producer, but this also impacts your familyhood. So it can be, it impacts you both on the clock and away from the clock. Yeah, you bet, Glenn. Most, all of our producers in the state of Oregon and really nationwide are family farmers and family ranchers, uh, Sometimes they're first generation, but a good many times they're they're two, three, even five, upwards of six generations that that have grown up on these ranches uh, and have slowly taken over the reins. Uh, and that is their livelihood, and that is their business. They are small business people, and they they raise beef for um, human consumption, for hamburgers, steaks, and so forth. When a, wildfire rolls through your operation um you know it's devastating that that's you know think about it one day you go to work and then next day you don't have anything there to go to um so they have to start rebuilding and they rebuild those ranches and in time they they will get rebuilt and and the ranges will rehabilitate but it's not an overnight not an overnight deal when fire um, rages through your outfit burns up all of your pasture it can take a year to two years just to rehabilitate those pastures where you can use them again and uh, and stock them and start uh, your livelihood all over again. So there, there's, you know, we haven't assessed, we haven't uncovered really all of the needs out there. It's too early, but we're starting to get some, some information back as people are able to get out, find their livestock, um, those that are alive, those that don't have to be euthanized, um, and they're they're gathering their livestock and assessing, you know, what their infrastructure needs are. Matt, that has got to be a daunting task for producers across the state. What words of encouragement would you give to the livestock producers out there as they face, like you said, maybe a year, maybe a couple of years of trying to overcome, trying to rebound from this wildfire season? You know, first and foremost, I would say don't be too proud to ask for help. Um, we are working hard through Oregon Cattlemen's Association, not just on, on a, you know, to gather money and have it available, but assistance. We're here to assist and connect you with the right people and the right resources. Well, we've uh, asked the governor to um, to designate uh, areas that are hard hit by fire as disaster areas, and she's done that. Um, she has also written letters to the Secretary of Agriculture and the Secretary of Interior asking for help from the federal government, and the federal government is stepping forward and letting people graze CRP grounds as an emergency basis, um, asking for relief on their permit rotations and, and the amount of grass that they could use on federal grounds to make up for what we've lost on private individuals ground. Um, FSA um, has disaster uh, assistance through livestock forage disaster program or LIP program. There's all sorts of programs out there. Some of them are just being put together. Um, But USDA, NRCS, the FSA, Oregon Cattlemen's Association, OSU, and private individuals. We're all coming together. So they're not alone. Um, there's help out there. Uh, and in the new AgriStress helpline that 
that we helped put together just this past year is available. So there are resources. Uh, my, again, m- my main uh, message here is you're not alone. The industry pulls together and helps each other, and we are here to help you. And there's resources out there to help you through this. Matt McElligot, president of the OCA, thanks so much for joining us right here on the PNW Ag Network.